What are you friggin' tired of hearing about, seeing, talking about? Tell me. Oh man, there's so many things. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today I will be talking to one of your favorite content creators, John from Obese to Beast, as part of my new series, Well Fed and Fed Up. Here we will be talking about diet culture, body image, mental health, and more. Every episode I will be sitting down with a fellow influencer or content creator to ask some really tough questions and have real uncensored, unscripted discussions without the shame and judgment. Because we're all a little fed up. Right? I ain't calming down no more. I'm thinking you're trying to calm me down. Now, before we dive in, I want to remind you to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with past or current experiences with disordered eating. I also want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on an episode. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, John. I'm really excited to chat with you here. No, oh, yeah, I'm super excited. Thanks for having me. Um, so briefly, why don't you just tell me a little bit about like the thought process behind your channel in general? Uh, well, so it started off as just basically me wanting to make a channel for people that are trying to lose weight by someone who has lost weight. Because when I started, I've been doing this for eight years now. I actually just realized that and that's way too long, <laughs> but I've been doing this for eight years. So when I first started YouTube, there really wasn't many people doing like, Hey, this is how you lose weight and I also have lost weight. So that was kind of the, the reason that I started the channel. And then over years, you know, things change, YouTube changes, and now basically what I do is more, I guess, commentary-based, kind of similar to what you do, right? Um, I, I like to share my opinion. I like to think that I have a pretty neutral opinion or a, at least a pretty, like, level-headed opinion on things, um, especially when it comes to fitness and weight loss. And so that's what I do now. Okay, so I want to talk about what I see has kind of been almost the focus of your channel over the past year or so, and that is kind of talking about the body positive movement. Now, as someone who's lost a lot of weight and obviously, you know, rightfully quite proud of that, and you feel it was important to do that for your health, um, it seems like, you know, a lot of talk around body positivity seems to kind of be triggering for you. Um, do you feel triggered by like larger body people promoting body positivity or like health at every size? No, I think that personally for me, my whole stance is that everyone should be body positive. That's kind of how, where I go, how I go about things. So I guess like triggered is a word that some people like, some people don't like, but I get bothered when anyone is policing that term or making it, or I guess gatekeeping is a better word. When people are gatekeeping that term um, and kind of telling people you're, you're allowed to be body positive or you're not allowed to be body positive, that's, that's when I have, I guess I have an issue. Totally. And so like, what are your thoughts on smaller body folks using terms like that? For me, it doesn't, I, I think everyone should use it, right? Like the, the term is, and I know that there's, there's more that goes into like why people will believe that you should or shouldn't use it and all that stuff. But like for me, the term is body positive and everyone has a body and I feel like everyone should be positive about it. Um, so I don't, my whole thing is like, I think everyone should be able to use it. Um, I know there are, there are different terms now. There's, you know, there's body positive, there's body neutrality, there's body acceptance, and all of those have a little bit different meanings. Um, and I've been learning about that as well. Um, but I think all in all, all of those terms are, you know, should be a positive thing for, for people. And like you mentioned, there's a variety of different terms. Like what term would you use to describe yourself and your relationship with your body right now? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say that, I mean, I've just been diving into the research and like diving into the, the explanations, um, but I, I recently read an article where it kind of went over the three different ones. And I would say I, I would probably uh, identify the most with body acceptance. Like my body is, you know, I, I accept it. I th there are days when I'm body positive, but I think that trying claiming that you're always positive about your body is just not realistic and it goes into the whole toxic positivity thing which i think is an issue as well um, but i would say like body acceptance body neutrality is a little bit too extreme for me just kind of being like i don't care about my body and it doesn't matter i think that that's that's a really hard ask for a lot of people so for me i would say body acceptance is what would like describe me more i guess 
Yeah, that totally makes sense. And you know, I've watched a lot of your videos and it seems you are often like quite critical of intuitive eating because you know, you feel it's for a very specific person who has maybe never struggled with their weight like I know you have in the past. And I do agree that it's not for everyone. And I actually say this literally in every video where I mention intuitive eating. Um, I don't necessarily agree that it's like not for folks who have struggled with their weight, but it's certainly not for everyone. Um, but I am curious in your mind, just knowing what you do know about intuitive eating, um, who is it for and who is it not for? That's a good question. I think that intuitive eating in, in general is a great thing. And I, I personally believe um, that it should be the end goal for anyone that's on any sort of like weight loss journey or just health journey in general where food's a big, you know, because there are people that never have issues with food and they don't have to worry about intuitive eating or anything yeah. like that, right, in my opinion. But people that have had food struggles, whether that's eating too little, eating too much or anything in between, um, I think that getting to that point where you're no longer tracking is that is the goal. Uh, but for me, I'm critical of people just kind of claiming that if you have struggles with food, just start doing intuitive eating and then you will be healed. Uh, I think that that's a little, a little uh, narrow minded. And uh, I think that we should more talk about how do we get to a point where we are doing intuitive eating. And I know that you've probably seen me say like, I don't like to say what I do is intuitive eating. I like to call it like mindful eating. Um, there's not that much of a difference to be honest, but like I, the, the main difference I guess is that I still use some of the tools that I learned through tracking, um, to make, I try to make smart decisions in the food that I eat, but I haven't like tracked my macros in five or six years. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why, that's why I call what I do mindful eating. It's very similar to intuitive eating, but honestly, like the whole intuitive eating thing, it's, it's become kind of it's just become so toxic in, in different cult or in different circles that I try and stay away from it really. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, a lot of people get feel very triggered when um, intuitive eating is used for, you know, weight loss or weight loss circles or things like that, simply because the concept as it was originally conceptualized by its creators was not for weight loss. Ultimately, you know, intuitive eating is not for everyone. Um, it definitely, you know, some people who are in larger bodies and trying to lose weight may lose weight when they take on intuitive eating, they can. Um, but like I said, it's definitely not a technique for everyone right out the gates, nor is it a quick fix, nor is it something that, you know, I would recommend if your goal is to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say this though, because it's something that's important to me because I think that there are a lot of people that might have similar beliefs that I have that take it too far. This is, <laughs> this is with everything in the world, but, um, there, it, it frustrates me when I hear the, uh, the term, well, I intuitively ate myself into X, Y, Z, 300 pounds, whatever it is. Right. That's frustrating to me because I think that that's, that's almost straw manning and turning it into something that it's not. I think that intuitive eating or mindful eating, whatever you want to call it, you know, trying to be smart with your nutrition without actually actually tracking everything. I think that it's a beautiful thing and it can help an incredible amount of people. Um, but again, it's not, it's not a silver bullet that's going to solve all the problems for everybody. But I don't think that it's a negative thing. And I think people have turned it that, that maybe don't agree with it fully have turned it into a negative thing, which I think is just isn't helpful. I totally agree. And, and when I hear a statement like what you just suggested that I, you know, I intuitively ate myself into obesity or whatever, um, I intuitively ate um, X, Y, and Z. I think that they're not quite understanding the breadth of the intuitive eating movement um, because I think most people when they say or hear intuitive eating, they're only thinking, I eat when I'm hungry, I eat whatever I want, and I stop eating, you know, when I'm not hungry anymore. Yeah. Um, but that's just like one component of intuitive eating. So I think it really just comes down to not understanding the movement um, in its, you know, in its full, how it was fully conceptualized. And that actually includes gentle nutrition. The gentle nutrition is actually built in. And I, I agree 100%. And that's why I think because there are so many people that have that uh, a kind of preconceived notion for me, instead of trying to change their mind and switch exactly how they think, that's why I like to say I, what I do is mindful eating and like, what's that? And basically I'm like, it's basically like me with a Trojan horse that it's like mindful eating. And then inside of it is actually intuitive eating with just like a little bit of changes. It's really not that different, but people, cause they hear intuitive eating like, Oh my God, no, I've heard so much bad things about that. But then I tell them mindfully and they're like, Hmm, interesting. I wonder what that is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally get it. And 
Um, and you know, speaking of intuitive eating, I know like one of the criticisms I've heard from you in some of your videos about intuitive eating is this idea that you know you let yourself eat the forbidden food that eventually you won't want it anymore. This is something that you hear from a lot of haze or intuitive eating proponents. Um, and it seems like maybe that wasn't the case for you and your experience when you were obese, which I think is totally fair. So I, I'm curious, like, why do you think that you wanted like McDonald's or junk food so often so much? Um, like, was it a habit? Was it that it tasted really good? Do you think you were addicted to it? Or was it just that maybe you weren't like in a really good, it really good tune with your body? Like you didn't have a good sense of what felt good to your body. Yeah, this is, this is a great question as well. I think that the reason I hate when, or I don't want to say hate, but the reason I, I dislike when people say, if you just allow yourself to eat it and take away the guilt, right, you'll all of a sudden feel fine and, and you'll you'll be able to control it. I think that, again, I'm not going to say that that doesn't work for anyone. I'm sure that it can. But I don't like when people use kind of absolutist language on anything, saying like, if you do this, this is what will happen because it, it worked for you. This is a whole criticism I have against a lot of things on the internet. People use their experience as this is the end all be all. And it's like, that worked for you. That's great. But that doesn't mean it's gonna work for everyone. But um, when it when it comes along, when it comes to like with me and like eating, you know, McDonald's and, and Mexican food, I live in San Diego. So it's really popular here and all that stuff. Like there was no like there was no guilt about it. I didn't feel bad. It was just, I, for me, a big thing that I talk a lot about on my channel is about teaching yourself about nutrition, right? Not, you don't have to become an expert, but like understanding, you know, the calories that are in these, these foods and like why maybe drinking a, like for me, a two liter of soda every day, isn't the best idea, right? Like learning those little things really made me realize, okay, this is why I'm gaining the weight. It's not just by happenstance and like, I'm just unlucky. Cause I used to really think that, like I used to joke around and, and say, oh, I don't have a metabolism with my friends because they'd be eating McDonald's. And in my head, I'm like, why aren't they gaining weight? But looking back, I was eating literally three times as much as they were, right? And so for me, I think that it's not as simple as just taking away the guilt because I didn't have any guilt eating McDonald's every day. I just didn't care. I didn't know anything. I didn't know any better, right? Um, and so that's why I'm kind of critical about that that point when I when I hear like haze or whatever, people kind of talking about that. And I'm just curious when when that, you know, in that stage of your life, when you were consistently having McDonald's or or, you know fried foods or things like that every day like how did you feel like physically I wasn't living I was just existing like that's what I've, I've said that a million times on my channel and I truly felt that way you know and I, I understand that not everyone has that same exact experience I get it and like that's why I don't tell people what they need to do but if you are feeling that way I don't think that you're a bad person for feeling that way and if you want to maybe make a change you can that's kind of the you know that's the premise on most of my videos at least yeah and I mean I think that that's a really great mantra and message to put out there um, and and you know even though I don't really have a weight loss channel so to speak um, I often like a lot of my followers actually you know might be want to gain weight or get out of weight loss mentality um, but I do think that I believe in like body autonomy and I always say this that I don't judge you if you want to lose weight. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those dietitians or I'm trying to learn to not be one of those dietitians that insists that, you know, or, or, or makes it seem like if you want to lose weight that you're failing or that you must have low self-esteem. I think everyone has the right to want to change their body in whatever way they want for whatever reason they want, whether that's for health reasons or aesthetic reasons. Any reason is valid in my books. Um, I'm not here to judge that and I think it only makes sense that in our aesthetic driven society that we do just naturally want to change our body or look our best and feel our best. And there shouldn't be any additional guilt and shame associated with that. So yeah, I think that that's a really great message to be putting out there. Um, now I did see in a recent video of yours, you talked about when you started your weight loss journey, you like restricted your calories so heavily that it actually caused binging. So it seems like there is actually some evidence there um, from your own experience that, you know, dieting too hard or too aggressively can do harm. So I'm curious, I mean, I know you don't use the term intuitive eating for yourself now, but do you think that some of the principles of intuitive eating would have been helpful for you 
back when you know you were struggling at your 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 highest weights there um i think that they they could have been helpful i like my whole my whole kind of journey when it comes to losing weight was I started off obviously eating whatever I wanted. Like I didn't know anything about nutrition. And then I started what I call the common sense diet. So it was like cutting out soda, junk food, and like fast food, which was uh, a lot of what I was eating at the time. And I really like, I, I've, I've explained this a lot, but like, I really think that the way I started was like a relatively healthy way to do it. Right. Just like cutting out the foods that regardless of how much you know about nutrition are probably not the best for you to be eating. Right. And I know that that can be argued against, but like for someone that was my size it seemed like a good thing to do but then over time I just kind of I started to learn a little bit about calories and I understood what they were but then it got bad because then I started thinking okay calories are the are the enemy and so I need to reduce them as much as I possibly can um, and that's when it started getting bad right that's when I started eating you know to a point there was at one point I was eating like 700 calories a day and I was like why am I not like I would do that for three days and then I would overeat for one of the days which now I realized was binging but I didn't realize what I was doing at the time um, and so that's when it got bad and so I think that just honestly having any more knowledge about what I was doing at that time would have been helpful, but I just, I didn't have it. Right. I just kind of started and I was doing it on the fly and I was trying to figure it out myself. Um, I think that, you know, having those, especially with what you talk about, like intuitive eating with like the gentle nutrition could have been helpful for me, like having some guidelines at least. Um, but I mean, that's why, that's why I'm so I'm so adamant on my channel and I'm, I'm sure you've seen this in videos is I, I whenever I see these fad diets or whenever I see these really extreme things I always say they will work a hundred percent they'll get you to lose weight real quick but is that the goal I don't think so right the goal is to lose weight but more importantly be healthy for the rest of your life period right that's what we should be doing and these really extreme diets the reason I have such a like a visceral reaction is because I see myself doing that I mean maybe I wasn't doing any particular diet but I was way going way too hard and I know where that led me and I don't want people to go down that road um, and so that's why I am a fan of you know learning how to track your macros learning how to do those things but not relying on them forever and finding intuitive eating mindful eating whatever you know whatever you want to call it yeah for sure and, and speaking of your past experience with restricting and binging, do you feel like you have like a completely normal relationship with food today? That's a really good question. I, I personally believe that I do um, as much as you can dealing with what I've dealt with. Like I, I, I only know how my relationship with food has ever been. So like maybe it's not perfect but i've never been in someone else's body that maybe has never had food issues right so it's hard for me to really know if it's like 100 percent normal but i will say the the thing that makes me feel like i definitely am in a good spot at least is that i have zero and i mean that zero fear that i will ever go back to being the size that i was and when i was struggling with food and when i was struggling with binge eating i was terrified because i felt like i was holding on by a thread and it was like any little thing could push me over the edge right could cut that thread and then i would be back to where i was now because of how much i know about nutrition and all the things that i've learned it would be it would be a it would be very hard for me to do that. Like I would have to completely stop doing the things that I enjoy and completely change the way I'm eating now to end up there. So I would say, I think I have about as healthy of a relationship with food as you can with someone that has had the past that I've had, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally does. And, and do you ever find yourself like slipping into some of like the more problematic behaviors that you had dealt with in the past? I would say the, the one thing that I have dealt with the most is kind of doing like food hoarding, like, or like macro hoarding or calorie hoarding for the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten better over time, especially now that like I'm, I'm currently training for a triathlon. So I'm doing lots of training sessions and I need to fuel those sessions. So I can't do that. Um, but like that was, that has been, and definitely was the hardest thing for me particularly to break because I like going to bed with the full stomach. I like, I mean, I, I remember when you did, um, you did your review on my diet, you said like, you know, he should have like, you said it would have been smart to maybe have a snack here. So you weren't so hungry when you had dinner. Like that's something that I have, I definitely have dealt with for sure. And you know, it's funny you say that because obviously we come from different places. Um, but I actually, when I was struggling with disordered eating, I also definitely did the food hoarding towards the end of the day. I think it's quite common. And I think, you know, 
a lot of us have that um, delayed gratification um, thing going on where you know we're able to hold ourselves, hold ourselves, hold ourselves in that state of hunger in a little bit. And then by the end of the day, like you said, like we don't like to go to bed hungry. We kind of like save it all. So it's something to look forward to at the end of the day. It's almost like having almost like a cheat, it's the cheat meal mentality, but condensed to each little day, so to speak. Um, I actually think it's quite common for folks who have chronically dieted. So you're not alone there. Okay, so speaking of dieting, I'm curious, uh, are there any like diet rules that you still stick to pretty strictly? Nothing super crazy. I try to just be smart. Um, I try not to eat things that are super calorically dense all the time for no reason. Um, if I'm like at someone's birthday party, I'm going to have cake. I'm not going to say no. Um, I still try and be smart about my liquid calories because there, it's just so easy to go over on those, right? Like I used to be a huge soda drinker. I don't drink soda. I have diet sodas. I know some people freak out when you talk about that, but um, you know, there are like little things that I do. I would say like the liquid calories is still one that like for me, unless it's like a nice coffee drink because I can't drink black coffee and whoever does is a psychopath in my opinion, but you know, it is fine. Um, but like other than that, that's pretty much, that would, I would say that's like the biggest rule that I've, I've stuck to is just avoiding liquid calories, especially if there are better options that don't have any calories. Yeah, no, I, I honestly, I actually just released a kind of, um, a, a video on weight loss tips, believe it or not, which is, I know out of, out of, um, out of my kind of normal comfort zone. But of course, these are things that I get asked about and things that I also know about. Um, and actually that is one of my tips is that, you know, it's, it's actually very hard to regulate our hunger and fullness when it comes to those liquid calories. So unlike food, where I think even if you are practicing intuitive eating, the research shows that you know we don't really self-regulate those calories from liquids like we do from food even if you have like a really strong relationship with food and you're really in tune with your body and your hunger and fullness it is very easy to just you know down an extra 500 calories when you are having juice or soda or alcohol of course um, or any kind of more calorie filled drink so I'm, I'm, I'm totally on, on board with that. In my opinion, I also don't drink a lot of my calories as well. Just not as satisfying, of course, as chewing that food. Yeah, I agree. Um, now you mentioned, and you, we've talked about this briefly, but you mentioned that you had learned enough about nutrition through tracking to be able to engage in that kind of more mindful eating. Um, so can you just like briefly tell me, I know mindful eating to you is like intuitive eating, but I'm curious what about the tracking helped you get to that place? Yeah. So learning, learning how to track macros and calories, really, it just showed me how some foods are just so unbelievably dense in calories, um, you know, like cheesecake or just things that have maybe like a lot of fat that maybe you didn't realize or the amount of calories that are in some beverages and, and just things like that. Right. So learning all of those things and then also just kind of having similar foods. I'm, I'm someone that I eat similar foods all the time. It's, it's a thing that people joke around with me about. I eat stir fry all the time. I really enjoy it, right? I eat oatmeal all the time. I really enjoy it. People make fun of me. It's, it's a great time. Um, but like, so being able to know, like if I eat this, it's probably going to be around this many calories and it's, it's not even, I don't even have to really think about it. All of those little things have played a part in how I look at food now, right? And how I make, I, I try to make smart decisions and that can be different for everyone, but smart decisions for me and, and, you know, fuel my body for the workouts that I'm doing and for the life that I'm trying to live. And so that, that's how it's, it's kind of helped me. Um, it's, it's just given me tools to make better decisions, I guess. And you mentioned you ate a lot of the same kinds of foods every day and you have a sense, okay, this probably has like, this oatmeal bowl probably has like 350 calories. I mean, I'm a dietitian, so if I turn that part of my brain on, I could also calorie count these things too all day long if I wanted to. But I'm just curious, what do you think would happen if you ate foods, different foods for a week that maybe you weren't, weren't already ingrained in your head, the macros, the calories, all the numbers, what do you think would happen to your body, to your weight? That's a good question. I think that I would definitely, I would definitely be a little anxious because like for me, I, 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 sh I have anxiety and stuff. And so 
part of why and also ADD. I'm not I'm not trying to go on to all of that stuff, but like part of the reason why I eat similar foods is because of those things. <laughs> so like I know that I would definitely probably feel pretty anxious. Um, I do I think that I would gain a substantial amount of weight? Not really. I went to the UK years back and this was years after I had been done tracking and obviously I wasn't able to eat the similar foods that I ate and I was there for two months and I didn't come back like way heavier or way lighter so I was like able to just kind of try and be smart so I think that I would be able to do it it's just why would I want to put myself through that like something that I see a lot on YouTube is like food challenges I do not enjoy them um, because like at least for me like I, I would never want to do one and like film it and put it on YouTube just because I feel like that's kind of putting a bad message out there right and so like I think that it, it would definitely make me anxious for sure but I think that I would it wouldn't be like that that big of a deal if that makes sense and then also I, I feel like because I'm my body is so used to eating similar things that my body might be like what is going on here <laughs> Yeah, I also don't do the food challenge thing. I couldn't, I just don't think I would I would enjoy it. Also, I would want to, I have a family, so it's like, do I really want to put my family on keto for a week? Hell no. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I just don't think that, uh, I don't I don't find myself enjoying those, watching those videos either. I just, I don't know, not a concept that, that, um, that I can relate to. So you mentioned that you have anxiety, and I mean, I have anxiety. I would say that most content creators that I've spoken to have anxiety. Um, and this is not an easy profession. This is not an easy space to, to be in. Um, I'm curious, like, how do you deal as somebody with anxiety uh, with backlash, with negative comments, with people, other people making videos about you, with just, just the negativity, the trolling that happens on YouTube? <laughs> Please let me learn from you. <laughs> uh, not well is how I deal with it. No, um, <laughs> I just, again, like for me, what I try and do, and I, I really believe this. I think if, if I truly believe what I said in the video and I stand behind it a hundred percent, if there is backlash, that's okay. Right. And that, that can happen and it does happen. But if I truly believe what I stand, if I truly stand behind what I said and I believe in every word, then, then I'm fine. But I also am willing and, you know, in this past year and a half, two years, my stances on a lot of stuff have shifted and changed because I have learned more about stuff. And so I think that that for me, that's what really helps a lot is like I truly, when I put out a video, I truly believe and I stand behind everything I say. Um, and if eventually my mind change, changes or I have, you know, I have that shift, I don't mind, you know, saying that. And I think for a lot of people, a lot of the anxiety comes from what if I'm wrong, but I and, and you feel like you can't change your mind about it because you have this hard stance. So that that's for me really is what helps is just knowing that I, I believe what I'm saying in the moment. And if I end up changing my mind, I don't mind, you know, being like, hey, I changed my mind. I think that's great advice and something that I do myself. I mean, you've seen my metamorphosis over uh, the years and that, you know, I've I've just been learning myself and bringing people along with me on that learning journey. And, and so it's, I think a really important, um, it's really important for professionals to, to change as they learn and as new evidence comes out and that they change their stance on certain things. Um, so that's only natural. I'm human. I'm not a robot. And so as I learn more, I adapt my, my, my position. And, uh, and so it's been, it's been nice to bring people on that journey. And I know I'm going to lose people the same way if I was like, if I was vegan and then I went unvegan, you're going to expect that some people are going to be pissed about it and they're not going to want to follow you anymore. But I think that, that, you know, there's no point in you putting out messages if you don't believe them yourself. And I think it's really important to be true to yourself and to be honest when your stance on something has changed, when you're wrong about something. I try to be transparent when I am wrong about something or when I just don't know, because I'm not, you know, we're not experts on everything. So yeah, I think that that's all really good advice. Take a note. And speaking of like the wellness community, I'm curious, what are you, super fed up with in this community like what are you friggin tired of hearing about seeing talking about tell me oh man there's so many things um it's it's really the extremes on both ends so the extremes on maybe like health at every size or whatever you want to call it and then the extremes of like fitness i just like when you see the waist trainers and the fit tees and the like 
I am sick. This is this truly is what it comes down to. I am sick of influencers using people's insecurities to make money for themselves. Whether that's on this side of the spectrum or on this side of the spectrum, I, that's what I'm sick of. Of using people's insecurities to make money for themselves. There's nothing wrong with making money and like, you know, having followers and that being a way to make money. Totally fine. I get it. Like, uh, hello, you know. But if you are preying on people's insecurities and that's how you're making your money, uh, it bothers me and I might make a video about it. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And like you said, there's so much of it and no one's immune. Like no matter what kind of content you're gravitating towards, you're going to be fed some kind of obnoxious sales pitch. So, and, and very likely from somebody who actually has no qualifications or no business giving you said sales pitch. So yeah, I, I see it too. And I totally agree that it's, it's a problem. Um, and I don't, and, and I, I think people are, are going to have a hard time kind of shielding themselves from that information, uh, just because social media is so toxic. Yeah, it's tough, man. Like it's there. It's definitely something I've noticed is there's been this weird, I don't want to say shift, but a lot of people, they'll see someone that has a lot of followers and they'll just kind of assume that they're correct. And I think that's very dangerous. <laughs> I think it's very dangerous. I think like with anything, always be an informed, like I made a whole post about this, but always be informed. Like influencers aren't your friends. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but just understand like the recommendation you would get from a friend is very different from the recommendation you would get from an influencer, especially if there is some, they are somehow getting paid and making money off of this recommendation. So just be careful, be informed, be a smart consumer. Yeah, I 100% agree. And on that note, I mean, what do you want my community to know about your message and you know who your content is for, who your content is not for? Um, what do they need to know if they have not watched an Obese to Beast video before? Yeah, uh, good question. I would say if you've seen the thumbnails and you're like, I won't like his videos, maybe watch one <laughs> because normally they're pretty much clickbait, but you know, it is what it is, it's YouTube. Um, but like for me, the, the, the message that I wanna put out there is that if you want to lose weight, that's very important. If you want to lose weight, I believe that you can do that. And I believe there is a way to do that that is healthy, that doesn't have to be extreme, that won't make you feel like absolute garbage that you can sustain for the rest of your life. If you don't wanna lose weight, that's totally fine. And then on top of that, if you are making content, preying on other people or, or selling lies or you know just telling lies, I might make a video about that as well. So the, I guess that would be the, uh, the the message is I, I truly believe that I'm doing what I can to help as many people as possible without trying to steal or um, take advantage of people as well. That's so great. That was so interesting, John. I learned so much. I'm sure my audience learned so much. And um, if they haven't already checked out your channel, Obese to Beast, I'm gonna leave some information, of course, in the description so that you know where to find John. Um, but thank you so much, John, for joining me. No, yeah, this was great. I had a ton of fun talking and maybe we'll do it again so soon sometimes. Absolutely. And folks, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you loved this video, don't forget to give me the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me interview next for my Fed Up series. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.